Hey, I'm Dre. And I'm Gabe. And welcome to the Mutual Friend Podcast. So, today, we are talking about free will and choice. And um, for part of it, we're going to be talking about some of the debates uh, among Christianity about how free will and God's sovereignty kind of balance, or if they're in conflict with each other. And then the other part, we're going to be talking about our free will in the sense of the choices that we make and why they're so important. So, um, what do you think about this topic? Just, just in general, give me, give me like some spark notes. Uh, well, free will, it's a, it's the gift that God gave us, or was it? Didn't it just enter because we sinned? Well, we had free will from the beginning, not just because we sinned, right? I guess, but I, I think the knowledge of good and evil kind of made free will more prevalent. Hmm. But we always had the choice anyway. Yes. yes. We just didn't even have the knowledge like, we, I, to we do didn't, it. We didn't have the knowledge of doing good or bad. Right. Yeah. We were just doing. Just doing. We were just living. Right. Thanks, Eve. Right. <laughs> no, thanks, Adam. Really. That's true, man. Adam was the one who was responsible. So, and he messed it up. But that's a whole other debate one day. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, look. The question of if mankind has free will is a fairly simple one. Do we make our own decisions, or is it controlled by some outside source or higher power? Are our choices determined by our own decision-making, or are we living in some kind of matrix? <laughs> the matrix. It's one of my, fa- it's one of my favorite theories. Mm. Okay, go ahead. All right, well, actually, funny thing. You know the matrix was actually created by a black woman? No, I didn't. This That's black this black woman wrote a book, right? right? It was more it was more directed towards like religion, and so basically, the Matrix and also the Terminator were, were written by her. But hmm. and she had the book, and the two stories mixed up to each other. And if you know the story, basically how they intertwine is Neo is the son of the woman that sent Terminator, and that's how they kind of go together. Oh, interesting. It's a whole it's a whole thing I watched. But anyways, this Matrix, was like her intention. Yes. Oh. And she took it to Hollywood, and she tried to, like, get studios to, like, publish it, but then the studios took it and broke it in half and made two different movies. Oh. So, yeah. Well, they're cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, um, because of movies like that and mm-hmm. concepts like that, um, the world in general often questions, are we living in the Matrix, or are we merely just making choices? Um, and if you didn't know God, mm-hmm. if you weren't a Christian... How do you think you would answer that? And why? Ask me that one more time. Like, like if you weren't a Christian Mm -hmm. and you didn't believe in God, what would you think about stuff like the Matrix in relation to our free will? Like, do we just are we just out here making choices, or is there something or someone who uh, maybe controls those thoughts? Like some type of simulation. I feel like Mm -hmm. what if I was if I wasn't a Christian. And I believed in that kind of thing mm. with the Matrix, like how how that how that's viewed. Right. I feel like people will see it as a simulation, but also the choices are like getting the answers right on that test. So Explain. Every, every time you do something good, it's like it's gonna help you out in the long run, like karma. Ah, I see. What do you think? I see. Well, obviously. From a Christian perspective, I wouldn't say any of that. Mm-hmm. But if I were like not a Christian and I didn't have a biblical worldview, I'm thinking like, where do we even get the idea of the Matrix from? The movie. I know, but that's because our age range always grew up with that movie being around. Yeah. But what about people before that? Like, did they think that? Probably not. But they also believed we went to the moon. But that's a whole different thing. Oh. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> um but but yeah. I would probably lean towards the we just make choices and that's it. Mm. Um but being a believer suddenly there's more Actually, I don't even think it would go that deep. I think they would just be living I, like I Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, as a as a believer like from a Christian perspective, 
uh, of course, we would say that humans have some sort of free will, and we definitely make our own conscious decisions in some way, yeah. right? But where the debate comes in is whether or not we have free will all the time, or are there certain scenarios in which God overrides our free will? Uh, and, of course, there's disagreement on if man has free will in regards to, like, his salvation in general. Um, so let's take it from the first, the first one, which is, um, does man have free will all the time? Yes. Okay. So leads to the second question, are there scenarios when God might override your free will? No. Interesting. See, I didn't think about this until I started like really on preparing for this. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, exactly what, like you were saying, like, no, why would he? do that but then there were some arguments that are like really good i don't i don't agree mm-hmm. but at least i was like hmm that's an interesting thought um, i love i love to, i love to hear p- people's theories because mm-hmm. it's like none of us we never know if we're actually right like we're not god mm-hmm. we can't determine what's real what's really the fact and what's not that's but god doesn't even ask us to do that right you know he doesn't ask that of us but to know everything yeah that's where we fall into so many traps because we're trying yeah. to figure out so much stuff you know i love i love questions i want the answers but mm-hmm. it's not the goal you know right 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 um yeah so like i said there's disagreements on how free will and god's sovereignty play into each other mm-hmm. and i've done a lot of research on some of the different uh views on that and the arguments for one or the other and basically as you know there's basically two sides to this coin. You like you either believe that people have choices all the time when it regards to their salvation and we choose whether or not we get to be saved. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, you have people who say we have no choice in the matter at all. God just chooses who he wants to be saved and that's that. And both have very 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 good arguments for why they believe that. I'm talking about Christians. So, on the spot, mm-hmm. which way would you lean if you had to pick? Just in regard to salvation, not not any choice, not just all your choices, but just in like your salvation. I'm gonna take the option that's in the middle. All right, this is okay. What I mean by that. Okay, in the middle, the opportunity of salvation mm-hmm. is there because. God, God knows everything. So if you think about it, he knows who's going to go to heaven and who's not. Exactly. But the fact that he gives us the opportunity to live this life and get to and basically make that choice and have the You know what I'm trying Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like it's like everyone the, has the choice to go to heaven if they want to. Yeah. Ultimately God knows what you're going to pick, pick, but he still lets you live yeah. out, and it's, it's up to us on earth, our, the believers, to help those that don't even realize they have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I'm glad you said that in the middle, because I agree. I feel like it doesn't need to be a debate on whether or not it's yeah. this side or this side, when really it's kind of like an and or both kind of thing. As far as I'm thinking, and again... I don't know everything, but it's good to talk about it because you know. Yeah. Um, it's like yeah. he gives us that. It's like he's Willy Wonka. He gives us the opportunity to get the golden ticket, bro. Right. Yeah. Right. Except he's not crooked about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I definitely think it's kind of like an and or both. Um. Yeah. Something that's kind of hard to explain is kind of like okay, God knows everything, right? Mm-hmm. He knows who's going to go to heaven and hell. Yeah. But does that necessarily mean that he is determining you're going to hell? Like, no, he just knows about it, you know? Or am I off? I feel like because we had that opportunity, I feel like... Hmm, I don't know, actually. I don't think we're supposed to know. Hmm. I don't even know. That's a good should, point. I don't know if we sh- I don't know if we should care if God knows who's going to hell. I think it's our job to to stop those from going to hell. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. Because this is another thing that I always think, and this is what a lot of people who are more, who are like stronger on the choice side always say is, mm-hmm. well, God is the one who determines exactly who's going to heaven or hell all the time, and we have no choice in the matter. Now, what's the point of spreading the gospel anyway? If people are just pre-chosen, predestined, and it means like we don't get a choice, why are we going around and telling people stuff? Unless you believe that with you going around and telling people stuff, then that's like part of God's plan to choose someone, which is another interesting thought. But then that would mean that you're not even like you deciding. Okay, you've been in this situation, I'm sure. You are in a place with a bunch of, of people. And you feel the Holy Spirit telling you, Mm -hmm. you should talk to this person because it's going to lead to like a a spiritual moment, right? I had this this very opportunity at work. Oh, perfect. Talk about it in a second. Don't lose the story. So we get those opportunities and we have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Am I going to say yes to the Holy Spirit telling me to talk to them or not? And in that scenario, your conversation could plant a seed in them. That can lead to their salvation. But all that is about perspective on how you look at um, that. Now, from the outside looking in, do you think that could look like um, God overriding it? God overriding our free will? Yeah. From, like, the Holy Spirit telling you to do something. Like, giving you... I would think so. from the outside perspective. I would think so for a second, except for for the fact that you can say no. Like, I've said no myself. This is not something I'm bragging about. But there's been moments where the Holy Spirit's like, you should go talk to this person. They're having a bad day. And I'm like, I don't feel like it. Yeah. And God was trying to set up an opportunity for that person. And I chose to not want to be involved. Mm. Which is bad. Um, Sometimes we choose comfortability over what we re- what God wants us to do. We just exactly. want to be comfortable. Exactly. I fall into that all the time. Like, I love to be just chilling, Mm -hmm. you know, but God wants me to be on the move, trying to make moves for the kingdom. Exactly. And that's, that's the point. And that's why, like, I would, I would be very weary of being so far on this side of the argument because Mm -hmm. then what's, there's no sense of urgency to want to go spread the gospel. Because like you said, your goal is to make moves for the kingdom. Well, if you were saying that we don't have a choice anyway, what's the point? Um, yeah, what's the point? So, um, your story about work. Go ahead. All right, so, my boy Tuan, it's not his real name, but... Oh, okay. Tuan. Tuan, quote, unquote. <laughs> uh, he never really heard the gospel or anything like that, but, you know, I would just, you know, he's my boy, like, we just hang out every day, you know, we, on lunch breaks, we just be chilling, you know, uh... But the opportunity came when we were listening to music in my car, and music is hard for me. It's one of my it's one of my sins because sometimes I'll be listening to music that I should not be listening to. Uh, but you know, I've I've gotten better with it, and uh, I just start I started listening to more Christian rap and things of that nature just because because I feel like that's something easy to like share with somebody that's not that's a non believer because mm-hmm. music's something that everybody feel like can connect with. Mm-hmm. And so just sharing it with that, he's like, what the, what the heck is this? You know, he's like, what are we listening to? Is this off-brand Drake? You know mm, what I'm saying? Off-brand they, Drake. They, like, and so, you know, just telling them how, like, what's, who it is and, like, what's it about, you know, trying to get them to understand. You know, I'm trying to get them to do, like, whenever you host these Bible studies, I try to get them to come with me and stuff like yeah. that. But, you know, I'm still I'm still working with trying to talk to them, but... Mm-hmm. You know, in that in those moments when I'm with him, I definitely know that the God wants me to, you know, nudge, just because mm. he's comfortable with me. So I feel like in some instances, you it's like you know when the Holy Spirit is telling you not to, like, like oh, that, feel, ooh, that's another good truth, right there. Like I feel like the like I understand when like you see those videos of people preaching in the streets, you know, mm-hmm. and that's good. I don't knock it, but I also feel like. From a non-believer perspective, you're pushing religion on them. Yeah. Even though I don't like the word religion, I like the relationship with Christ. Of course, of course. But it's like from their perspective, you're pushing religion on me. It's like build a relationship first. Like even even with Jesus, you have to you build a relationship with him. Build a relationship with them first if you have the opportunity, and then you can 
let them see who you are and let them see like something different about this person. Mm. And then, you know, hook, line, sinker. Right. Right, 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 right. Right. We'll have to do a whole episode just on like evangelism at some point. But that's a good, that's a good point. Like you want to build a relationship. Not, and again, I'm not saying that like you can't. It's not like you, it's like, it's not like you're going to build a relationship the first moment you meet somebody. Sometimes it is in that moment you just got to. And some people will get saved from the, you know, just heard a stranger say in the street. Like I, I know plenty of people that that's happened to and in the, in the Bible and the Acts, mm-hmm. that's what they would do. they go around from city to city and just start preaching. But, but not only would they be preaching to strangers and people would get saved, but they would also make friends. They would build relationships, and that's I how I mean, Jesus would hang out with hookers. That's a bar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and then, and then in the church, like, you push those people out. It's like, you got to reel those people in because you're not even supposed to judge them. God's supposed to judge them. So if you bring them in, and you let them know, like, this is a safe place, then that relationship can really blossom and grow. Yeah. Yeah. Always, always, our heart as believers. Oh, we talked about this in the purpose uh, episode. The whole purpose of our life mm-hmm. is to make disciples. That is the point. So if if you don't even think that we have a choice in it at all, then you're missing the point of our life. Yeah. So... Yeah. So, to build my case for why I think it's more on, it's more like an and or both, let's take it to the Bible. All right. The first story that, in my view, clearly suggests free will is found within the first few chapters of the Bible. The story of Adam and Eve. We don't really need to go to it because I'm sure we know it. But with Adam and Eve, they willingly chose to be disobedient to God. Right? They were coerced. Is that the right word? Eve was... Yes. But, but they yes, made the still, choice. It was still the choice, yes. Right. Um, oh. That's how you know, like, temptation isn't... Sometimes I feel like people look at temptation as sinning. When mm-hmm. we're all... Like Jesus was tempted. You know, right. from an office, if you're a non-believer, you can see temptation as a sin. But, you know, that temptation, it's, it's that acting on temptation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, the, the serpent could have came to them, said all this stuff they and were, they were like, nah, yeah. and that would have been fine. They could have done that, bro. They, they could have done that. They but could. honestly though, who's to say like the next person, let's say Adam and, Adam and Eve, they didn't, they never ate the fruit. Who's to say Cain or Abel ain't going to eat the fruit, them little boys. True. And also. Especially Cain with himself. You know, who, like, who said that in, in the instance where the, the serpent came to Eve, who said that was the first time? He could have came yeah. to her many times. That's just the part we heard about. Right. Um, but all, again, all of it was about making choices, and they decided to make a choice on their own. Like, God didn't make them do that. That wouldn't make sense. They made a choice, and so do we. So that is the first instance of people making choices. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, like I said, I don't understand why this is a debate um, in Christianity, because in Judaism... This is not a debate. This is like an axiom of their their belief system, which is that humans have free will. And I think, what's it called? It's called like, the term is like axiomatic. It's something that is not debated, okay? Um, yeah. Because the whole Old Testament mm-hmm. is based on people making choices and the consequences of those choices. So in their worldview... That's like how things worked. God presents you a choice, you make or choices, you make a choice, and then you suffer the consequences or the blessings or whatever. Mm-hmm. So why are we arguing about it in Christianity? I have no idea. Here's a verse. Deuteronomy thirty verse nineteen. Um so yeah, here it is. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. God was not saying, I'm just going to make the decision for you. He said, here are some choices. You can make the choices. And in fact, he encourages you, please choose the right one. Yeah. So why are we arguing about it today? Don't know. 
Um, it's the center in us. It is. We like to make bad choices. Um, so the Council of Trent declared that the free will of man, moved and excited by God, can by its consent cooperate with God, who excites and invites its action. Basically what they're saying is it's and or both. It's not like one or the other. It's a both situation. Mm-hmm. You get this. The catechism of the Catholic Church, and the, usually we go to this to like say some of their whack beliefs, but this one's actually like solid. The catechism of the Roman Catholic Church asserts that freedom is the power rooted in reason and will. And then it goes on to say that God created man a rational being, conferring on him the dignity of a person who can initiate and control his own actions. God willed that man should be left in the hand of his own counsel so that he might of his own accord seek his creator and freely attain his full and blessed perfection by cleaving to him. So God made us to make choices because of the classic example. Why would he make robots who just automatically follow him? He wants us to make choices. So that is a very well said uh, point in, in the catechism right there. Any thoughts on this so far? Honestly, no. Okay. Because <laughs> it's solid. It makes yeah, sense. It's just, yeah. Um, and again, another point from the catechism, before I start bringing in some, some off stuff. By the working of grace, the Holy Spirit educates us in spiritual freedom in order to make us free collaborators in his work in the church and in the world. So the Holy Spirit's helping us make decisions, of course, by you know, spurring us on to make the good choices. Yeah. But ultimately, if we're collaborating, we have to make a choice, right? A lot of the time it's like, you know, the, you know the cartoon with the red little devil and one children. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a, lot of, a lot of that, it could really be looked at like, like that, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes I look at that as inwardly as the little red devil that's the center in us. And mm. if we're a believer, the little angel is the Holy Spirit in us. You know, mm-hmm. it's the fight between the flesh and the spirit through through that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, every choice I'm, we'll we'll get there, but every choice I feel like is our own. Mm. I agree. I think sometimes we definitely over spiritualize everything, and we're like, "Hmm, the devil tried to make me do this." Yeah, you just wanted to. My no, G. like you made a bad decision. <laughs> Um, and the whole concept. even if it's sub- yeah. subconsciously, even if it's yeah. subconsciously you're doing that, it's, it's still your choice. Exactly. I think it kind of stems from not wanting to be responsible or accountable for your decisions, especially as young people, because we're like, oh, we're young, we'll handle yeah. it later on. These decisions that you make now will affect your life, which again, we'll get to more in detail later. But it's just a fact. Yeah, we cannot be blaming the devil on our shoulder. Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Not saying the devil doesn't exist, but hey, in that yeah, instance. Spiritual warfare is real, though. Yeah, spiritual, spiritual warfare, warfare is weird, real. real for sure, but like sometimes I think we use it as a scapegoat instead of taking responsibility for our actions. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So, here's where things start to get a little shaky. So, in one of the Protestant uh, branches of Christianity, Lutheranism, uh, which I'm pretty familiar with, um, influenced, of course, by the teachings of the great reformer, Martin Luther, who really started reforming a lot of our whack Catholic um, ideologies that we held to. But this is the one that he, that he kept teaching in Lutheranism, Lutheranism that is just not good. So, teaches that man does indeed have free will, except for the choice of salvation. Uh, this is because of man's total depravity, which is the idea that man is not capable of choosing anything other than sin. Um, so, yeah. Thoughts on that? Well, to debunk that, or at least try to, um, through Jesus, we conquered sin. You know, like, through the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to overcome the sin. It's just the f- the flesh and our, and our wants and the desires do not line up with the Holy Spirit because we are not, we're not God, we're not Jesus. Mm-hmm. But through Him, we have the ability to make the right, the right choices. One of them being choosing God and choosing salvation. 
through Jesus Christ. Right. Right. And if we were totally depraved, meaning mm. we can't make any good decisions, well, how do we make the decision to choose Jesus? Exactly. But they would probably argue that in that, or not probably, they, they do argue that your decision for salvation, again, isn't a decision. It's the Holy Spirit had decided to choose you at that moment. Which you know, people do say people are chosen. I feel like that. Is, that's do true. Think, do you think that's where it comes from? I mean, because the Bible says that. Yeah. But I don't think that that statement means that just because you're chosen that you also can't choose. Think about people who get married in Western culture. All right. You might choose some woman to be your wife one day, mm -hmm. but if she don't choose you back, <laughs> then nothing is going to happen. Yeah. But in this mindset here, you can choose the wife and then you're just together automatically, you know? But that's not how this... I don't think that's what the Bible presents. It's more complicated. Or maybe not more complicated. Maybe it's more simple. Maybe we're overthinking I, it. I think, I think a, a lot of life is simple. I think we tend to overthink things because as sinners, we want to be right. And usually mm. the time we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Right. Um, another way to kind of debunk that idea that um, we can't make any good choices mm -hmm. is take someone like uh, Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, right? Mm -hmm. People who, as far as I know, have not confessed faith in Jesus. But when one of them goes and donates a million dollars to like an orphanage or something, are they, is that a bad choice? Like, I would probably argue that that's probably a good thing that they did, that they chose to do. Publicity, they want to But listen, that. though. But listen, though. It's still making a good choice to a degree, right? If they even made it. The people like that, I feel like they got people that okay. make a lot of the decisions for them. But I'm all right. Going to, I'm going all right. To all right. All right. Let's use another example. Um, Say you got a, a uncle, right? Mm -hmm. And your uncle is not a believer, and for your birthday, he chooses to give you $20 for your birthday. You haven't talked to him in three years, but he said, you know what? I want to give Gabe $20 for his birthday. Did he make a good decision there? A good choice? Should I take it? Exactly. That shows that you can make a good choice on your own. And that's that. Just like you can make bad choices. But that's not this. Well, okay, go. Let me counter that. Okay. All right, let's say random random person on the street. Mm -hmm. is like, hey, can I, can I borrow $5? You know, they, okay. seem, they seem like a you know, good human being, it seems like, for, off a of first glance. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever you need, my G. Uh -huh. They use that money to go buy some Coke, some, some crazy stuff. But the good choice is the person who gave the $5, right? The, the choices don't overlap. So what is the choice you're talking about? The choice to ask? The choice to give in that moment. Oh, the choice to give in that moment. Should 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 we be able should through our salvation have discernment over or not discernment over, but like seeing the situation as it is, do we have I don't even know where I'm going with it to be honest. Hey, cut all this out, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say? No. I don't even <laughs> Because cut I'm all thinking this out, like Drake. cut all of it I'm out. I'm thinking like okay. The person who gives doesn't know that that person goes and gets and buys coke. The decision, the good decision is that they gave the money to someone. And they could be unbelievable. Like, you know what? This person needs help. Right? Yeah. That's, that's the argument against total depravity is that you can make good choices. People can make good choices. Is the question is, I, oh, the question I'm trying to get to is, is it a, is it a, um, was it a good choice to give that person that money, even though it went to a bad cause? Okay. Not good. Okay, so like if that Bill makes Ga sense. If Bill Gates, now it makes more sense. Yeah, it's like so. If like Bill Gates like donated to a million dollars to a charity, but that charity doesn't even right help those. That with that is a good point. However, I think the good choice is not just like it plays out nice. It's like you made a good like moral thing in the moment. Like someone. Oh, here's a perfect example. You're a parent. Again, we are not parents. But I hear this a lot. Mm -hmm. Parents will say, 
once they have uh, their first, second kid or whatever, it is such a blessing to have a child. But that child might turn out 18 years down the line to be a bum, <laughs> could be a murderer, could be a rapist, like for real. Facts. Was it a bad decision to have that child? No. Nah. No, they didn't know how that was going to turn out. Hey, they turned out like that, though. You got to look at yourself. Was you being the godly parent that that God has wanted you to be, or were you doing? Were you choosing to do things your way instead of what God wanted you to do mm. throughout throughout those eighteen years? And that shows how choices influence Others. so many things. Yeah, so many things. But again, I'm just talking about the initial decision you make. Can it be good apart from, you know, apart from God? Like God, of course, is is good, right? But, like, there's people who don't know God who still make good decisions. Those good decisions are not enough to, like, get you to heaven by any yeah. means. No. But they can still make individual good decisions. See, in those choices, I feel like things like that, like, let's say, back to Bill, Bill Gates donating that million dollars, right? Mm. That million dollars that Bill Gates um, donated, right? And guys, what if God in God's plan that's used for something else? Like, that choice... Maybe it was maybe it was just for publicity, but God wants to use that in a way that He's not seeing it, the company's not seeing it, but someone's going to be able to use that money in the right way and push push something that God wants that can help His kingdom. You know, right? Like not every decision that we make, even if let's say a bit, let's say all right, we make a bad decision. Okay, it happens all the time. Um, but that bad decision leads to some to leads to someone being saved. Let's say. Hmm. Like let's say the bad decision was not not putting gas in cars. Like it's a bad decision not put gas in car when you're close to being on E. Then you get I do then, that all the time. Then you're on the side of the road, you know, no gas, and you're just sitting there. And mm-hmm. then someone comes up and helps you. Mm-hmm. They're helping you get your car all together. They're not believing. And then you then in that moment, from your bad decision, God gets you an opportunity to make a good choice. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is I feel like can be connected. It's a good point. And a lot of times, we're not even going to know it. We yeah. will make so many decisions that we don't know how it affects people. Another concept that kind of destroys the idea of total depravity mm-hmm. and uh, making choices and all that is this. In the Bible, God hardens people's hearts towards him, right? What does that mean? You know? Hardens our hearts towards Yeah, him. like you've seen, you've seen this in the Bible where like God will be like, It'll, it'll say that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? Mm-hmm. And he did not make the choice to do a good thing, right? Yeah. And then um, in the New Testament, when it's talking about choosing this, like, you know, to believe in Jesus, yeah. some situations God would harden their heart to where they can't choose anymore. Like, it's over, basically, for them. So if God hardens people's hearts against him, right? Mm-hmm. Why would he need to do that if we were totally depraved and we couldn't choose him anyway? That question, I feel like we don't need an answer to, but if I had to give an answer for his plan. Mm -hmm. You know, what Hitler did was bad, but what he did was part of God's plan. Even if we can't see it or understand it, Mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But... The closer we are to God, the closer he is to us. That's James 4, 8. Paraphrasing that. But. Paraphrase, okay. But yeah. yeah. Closer we are, the closer we are to God, the closer we are. He, the closer we are to God, the closer we are to him. He, the closer he is to us. There you go. Yeah. The closer we are to God, the closer he is to us. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was that was kind of the thought about total depravity. And maybe someone who believes in that can explain it better. Yeah. But this is the thing that I was that you know I come to. How can God harden someone's heart if mankind's heart is already hard? Like, what's the point? Okay, so again, this is um, this is another concept here that's on the exact opposite, mm-hmm. called synergy. Okay, synergy says that man has the freedom to and must, if he wants to be saved, choose to accept the work. Uh, with the grace of God. St. John Chrysostom. Chrysostom. 
is taught that divine grace is necessary to enable a sinner to return unto God and live. Yet man must first of himself desire and attempt to choose and obey God. Um, and the Catechism says, Since the initiative belongs to God in the order of grace, no one can merit the initial grace of forgiveness and justification at the beginning of conversion. So, with this, it's it's more on the both side where, yes, God initiates all these things to happen, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, he orders everything. But ultimately, we still make a choice. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And that's what I've said, even, like, before I was researching all this stuff, um, to see, like, what the Orthodox views have been throughout history. Mm-hmm. I've always said, if you listen to anybody's testimony about how they got saved... It seems like it's so God like ordained, right? Like this had to happen and this happened and then this person came into life and talked to them and it just like you can see God in that. So you can see, you know, how God was sovereign, but ultimately they still have to make a choice. Yeah. So it's kind of both. Um and when I say it like that it sounds simple. It's like salvation is also gaining revelation of what God has done in your life. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, that's kind of all I have on that. Um, and I don't think it needs to be a debate because God can be all-powerful and all-knowing even why, while people continue to exercise free will because God transcends time. Exactly. So by us making choices, like I don't think it con- conflicts with, with God's uh, sovereignty. So they don't need to be butting heads. They can work together, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one more verse. Two, two more verses that, in my mind, show that we choose, at least that we have a choice in the matter. Luke 13, 34. Um, oh, Jerusalem, this is Jesus talking. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. So Jesus is saying that God for with Israel has tried to bring Israel in, mm-hmm. wants to. He's initiated all this stuff, but the Israelites still choose to not be with him. And we do the same thing in our daily life. God might send this person to talk to you. He might have blessed you with this nice material thing. He might have saved you from a, a near-death experience or whatever. Yeah. But we still hey, choose. Actually, I've had five of those. Five, man, five of those. Yeah. Shoes. You want to hear one? Yeah, yeah, sure. Quick little story. Story time with G. <laughs> All right, so I was about seven years old. I was learning to ride my bike. Mm. And you know, I still don't. I mean, I know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Jake doesn't know how to ride a bike, but I don't at the same time. You okay. know, but I was learning to ride a bike, and I was just—I was on my street. I was just going. I was going. I was going. But I did. I started turning, but it's a straight. I don't know why I started turning, but I started to turn. So I turned. I turned into the road. And then you turn into the road. Yes, man. The van's coming. And I'm just pedaling. I'm just pedaling. By the grace of God, it hits my back wheel. Man. I fall over, and that's it. They kept on driving, by the way. Dang. Oh, they didn't even stop? That's what I'm saying. Bro. That's terrible. Even. <laughs> man. But yeah. I thought, man, I thought of another one that I almost witnessed. Remember when, <laughs> remember when we were at States, and we were, like, crossing the street? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I flew. Again, there's the age-old debate between... God's sovereignty and free will and how our choice of salvation, if we have it or whatever. But ultimately, like you said earlier, even though I feel like I'm pretty solid on my view on it, yeah. I don't really know. You don't really know. I don't think it's for us to know. But what we can know is our choices in general definitely have more of an effect on us than sometimes we think about. Like I said, especially because we're young, we don't always think about how our choices um will affect us down the line. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that we vague, we always vaguely say in, in Christian circles, you know, I made, I made bad choices. But that's like for real. Regrets. 
Right. But, like, that's for real, though. Like, we make, not only have we made bad choices, but we continue to make bad choices, and we try to act like we don't. Like, come on. Um, Yeah. Choices. Choices. Tell a story about a bad choice or something. A bad choice I've made in my life. Hmm. Made a lot. I'm sure there's funny ones, too. Yeah. Choices, choices, choices. Give me, like, two minutes. I I think of something. Okay. Um, Also, for young people, like I said, you got to make good choices now because down the line, there's going to be more people at stake because you're going to have kids and stuff. Like, now you really got to make choices that are smart. And don't just risk it in the moment, especially with relationships, which I'm... We will talk about in future episodes, but your choices you make with the people you hang around, yeah. your friends, and of course, significant others, you better be really, really solid on your choices because that will mess you up. I'll tell you one bad choice I made. Go ahead. All right, so this was about, I want to say about four, three years ago. Okay. I made this choice to go hang out with some people, but it was like, 12 o'clock at night they, they was close to my house So it wasn't that That far But I went over to their house It was all chilling Hanging out Someone has a great idea Let's go Let's go play manhunt In the park At 2 o'clock in the morning So we're walking over there And We ended up do playing about For like 20, 20 25 minutes But then it was like Ah this is boring Let's go back We get stopped by the cops Me and a bunch of guys We get stopped by the cops And it's like me being a black man, two o'clock in the morning. Oh, you're screwed. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I'm coming home. Dang. But in in that moment, that it was a bad idea to even put myself in that situation. You know, sometimes it's we we want we don't want to feel left out, so we try to be a part of something that we're not even that God never wanted us to be a part of. That is good. So it's like. In that moment, I made the choice to hang out with people that I probably, I probably, I should have just been home. I should have been sleeping. Mm. Now, think about it, I wish I had that sleep because I love to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a choice I made that was just bad. Exactly. Now, great. Now, the cop was cool, so the situation was didn't turn out bad, but it could have. It could have right. turned left very, very quick. Mm-hmm. But you have a story on a bad choice you made. Um, I have I have lots of stories about. Things that could have gone really bad if I would have, if I'm just being honest, like, if I would have acted on a lot of temptation that I was feeling and plotting, Mm -hmm. plotting, it could have been very bad. Very bad. And what I'm talking about is not even in my pre-Christian life. I mean, now, like, within the last year and a half, two years of... And again, we'll talk about this when we get to the relationship episodes. But, like, there's... Again, I don't want to spoil too much for the relationship episode, but let me just be straightforward. It is so easy to get girls now if you really want to. If you really want to. Not a committed relationship. Mm -hmm. That is hard to find. But if you just want to mess around, it is not hard. And during 2020, when everyone was, like, lonely... They would just be, like, falling at your feet, basically. It is not hard because where I worked at, you know, Mm -hmm. they were so desperate. And I'm thinking, like, this could be so easy. Like, no one would know. And, again, this is during my Christian life recently. And I'm thinking, who would know? It would be fun. I'll, ooh, God will forgive me. And so many opportunities, like, presented themselves. Mm. And I'm not saying this is the enemy. Some of it could have been. But a lot of it is just me and my own sinful nature thinking how I can plot out some evil. (laughs) And thankfully, like, I can say this honestly, like, nothing happened. Um, And all of that is really by the grace of God, by him, like, stopping me from going certain places or stopping me from talking to certain people. But the thought was definitely there whenever anyone would basically offer. And my brain, of course, I know that I should not, but Mm -hmm. of course, you're a young 20. And this was, like, new to me, too, because no one had ever, like, 
prior to when I started working there, like no one had ever really, really been so willing, you know? I was like, well, yeah. I didn't have to try, you know? And when I think about how those bad choices that I could have made but didn't could have panned out and ruined my reputation, would have ruined my conscience because I would have been guilty, you know, I'm glad that I that I didn't do anything um, because I know that it could have led to something so bad. And that's where choices come into play. Yeah. One bad choice during this year period that I was there could have completely ruined all my progression up to that point, could have completely ruined, like I said, my reputation. Because as soon as, like I said, say we're, we're doing this podcast, right? Yeah. Say I would have gone through with some of the, the link-ups that could have happened, and I say I could have gone through with that, and they saw the podcast, they're like, oh, but I know how he really is. Ruins the entire witness for Jesus. Yeah. And I, I can say, like, again, this, I'm speaking this in a humble way that thankfully because of a good choice I made to not f- go through with that, now the opportunity is still there, you know? Um, so, yeah. I, I'm sure I'm sure there's going to be people that, people that watch this going to be like, Gabe's talking about Jesus right now. Like, <laughs> you know, I've done some done some things that I'm not proud of. But right. It's like I'm growing. This is exactly my, this is one of those things of growth. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But also, it's like, like you said, like one bad decision can like mess up all the a lot Mess of it all like, up. Like, look at um, if you follow sports, like Henry Ruggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was drunk driving, you know, one bad choice and then ruined everything. Everything he worked his whole life for. Exactly. Prayers for that dude. But exactly. We we do gotta remember that. Exactly. You know, even through bad choices, we have to pray for people, even if it, even as messed up as it can be. Like, God still loves the murderers. God still loves the rapists. But from us, from our perspective, it's like, how how could you do that? How could you do such a thing? It's like that judgment isn't for us. It's for God and God alone. Watch this. We're thinking, how could you do this? How could you do that? God is thinking the same thing about us all the time. He's like, I've done all this for you, and you're doing this? Yeah. You're lying? You're being rude to your friend? God's doing the same thing to us. Yeah, for sure. That's a good point. It's a very good point. We should pray for those who make bad choices, because a lot of times we're making bad choices. And we're just, exactly. It's just not being broadcasted. Exactly. People just don't see our bad choices and we're making them and that they're affecting other people in bad ways. So that's a good point. You gotta be able to hold yourself accountable. Exactly. Not, not only for yourself for if but if you're also called in a in a situation where God has put you in a situation where he wants you to be a light in other people's lives, you need to be able to set a good example and not not be seen as a hypocrite in other people's eyes because they they know who you are in one situation but you're being something else than another exactly you want to be authentic yeah you know and that comes with making good choices daily daily and um yeah you don't want to be a hypocrite yeah like, you don't want to be a hypocrite like i've drank i've smoked i've done all i've done all these things mm-hmm. but that's that doesn't define me mm-hmm. and i've learned from those situations and i've grown from those situations and it's it's honestly helped my walk in, in many right. ways because I've seen where I've come from and where I'm at now. Right. And all those things, we'll have to have a whole episode just about this, but all those things I that you have talking, something controversial to also about that. We'll, save, we'll that, that. We'll save, save that. We'll save that. But all those things that you're talking about, you had to make a choice to do or not to do that. You know? It's not just... Mm, I'm saving this for another episode, yeah. actually, but it's all about your choices that you make. Yeah. That 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 affect your life and other people's. So yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Question. Okay. All right. What is the one choice that was besides your the choice to choose Jesus, of course? What is the best decision you've ever made? I'm too young to say that. I don't know. Up to this point. I don't know. The best decision I've ever made. Was it <laughs> Probably to up, not pick, do it. Picking a up a camera? Of... Nah. Nah. Um probably vis probably taking a visit to the church that I'm at now. Cause my church, shout out Calvary, Ohio. 
great church. A lot of my best relationships are from there. All of my best. No, a lot of my best relationships are from there. And it has helped my spiritual growth so much and has confirmed calling on my life. Yeah. All because of the decision to take someone's offer who invited me. You know? And I, I went... Well, I was doing a whole episode about church too, but yeah. I had visited so many different churches during this period. Mm-hmm. But uh, once I made a decision to go to that one, great choice. <laughs> what about you? What, what do you think is probably the best decision that you've made so far? Mm. Best choice. Besides the choice to follow Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't have to be super spiritual. Uh, I'd probably say picking up some drumsticks. Honestly, that changed my life in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, I made the choice when I was little. You know, I saw the I saw the drummer at church, and I just started mimicking everything he did. Mm. And then and then that led to playing in church. Then that led to playing for a choir. And then that led to playing at different churches. And that wow, led, it's just it's led to a lot of different people. A lot of people I've gotten to meet. A lot of people I've gotten to, you know, build relationships with. It's just it's changed my life my life in a lot of ways. And also, it's a gift. You know, it's mm. a gift that God gave me. Right. For sure, bro. You gifted with it. I try. All right. So, in, when I was studying James, you know, James chapter seven verses five through seven, seven through eight. I'm gonna read it real quick. Actually, always good to get the the actual words from the Lord. Mm. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. You know, I I looked at that verse as, and all we do, you know, God calls us to show patience and like, and the choices we make, um, it it allows His plans to take place. You know, good or bad, His His plan is always going to come. You know, it goes back to purpose. You know, the, His purpose for our life also comes from the choices we make on our every in everyday situations. You know, it all leads out into what he wants for us. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts? Thoughts is, is this. Like you said, the choices you make, they impact the kingdom, which is our whole purpose in life. Yeah. And my closing statements, what? Be Go kingdom ahead. pushers, y'all. Kingdom pushers. I love that. But uh, my closing thoughts is this. My grandmother always says, make good choices. Best advice you can ever give. Facts. Yeah, no, 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 we gotta do the um. Oh, yeah, the yeah, song yeah. recommendation. Song recommendation. Yes, yes, yes. All right, for this week, I've been listening to this song nonstop actually for the last week, and it's by Aha Gazelle. It's called "Take the Lead." There's a lot of good albums. I forget if it was a, it was on an album or an EP, but it was really good, and there's a lot of good songs on that album. So definitely check that out. But that song, "Take the Lead," it's, it's a banger. My song recommendation is Gratitude by Brandon Lake. Um, it's a really pretty song, but the words are really, really powerful. One of the lines is um, um, it's like, I know it's not much, but I've got nothing else. This might be paraphrasing, but it's something like this. I know it's not much, but I've got nothing else fit for a king other than Hallelujah. I was like, man, that's 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 a bar. Cause it's like we can't offer nothing yeah. other than our praise. Like we're so grateful for for what he's what he's done. So that's my song recommendation. I like it. Yeah. All right. So that's game. That's game. All right. I'm Dre. And I'm Gabe. And this has been the Mutual Friend Podcast. Peace. Peace.